over this whole period of time, I finally come to that conclusion. Like we're so much stronger in the impact ready range and we are so disadvantaged in the weaker range, unless you have that genetic anomaly situation where you have the longer tendons in the body. Um, and what percentage of people you think even have? It's less that? than 1%. So less than 1%. Yeah. Doesn't that make all this, I mean, that would probably confuse all the studies that we're looking at for muscle protein synthesis if we're not even taking into account the... Well, but who ends up in those studies? The people who are really into weightlifting. Yeah. And... Self-selected is what it, you're saying. Yeah. So that it becomes self-selecting. And like, for example, one of the most powerful references for variable resistance exercise. So in the more recent years, there have been some studies done with banding and bars and, and stuff like that. And there was one where they did it on, they had a control group that lifted regular weights and then they had the uh, variable resistance group. But both groups were Cornell athletes. So it's like, okay, I mean, <laughs> the people who lifted weights grew muscle and the people who used variable resistance tripled the gains of the weightlifting group. So it still came out much better, but they're all genetic outliers. Yeah. And so it's like, it's a bummer, but the people who generally end up not liking weightlifting or getting results from weightlifting, they go, they, they leave it. They go do something else. Hmm.